21, 1 through 8, and we're to the part now where we're talking about uh, the citizens of heaven and also the citizens of hell. And he breaks it down um, talking about, and we were, we were just getting to the point of talking of heaven and earth and the new believers. And who would that be? There will be the citizens of the new heaven and earth. And note that God himself here, as I was saying last Wednesday night, he's still speaking. And um, he's saying this so important that, that he told, he, you know, he said, make sure you write this down. You know, so we, 2,022 years later, will still be able to study it and read it and know how important it was that God said it. Um, so the citizens of the new heaven and earth will be those who thirst for God. Those that have accepted Christ, uh, God says that he will give them the water of life of all those that thirst for him and accept him in their life. 
And this, that's the person who receives Christ and receives that eternal life and receives that eternal water and God's going to give uh, life to that person who thirsts after it. And who is that? That's you. I mean, it, it's obvious that you're thirsting after it. You're always here on Sundays. You're always here on Wednesdays. And, and you're seeking for that. And because you have accepted Christ into your life, and, and your body, and you don't even, we don't even realize it. And I talked about this a few weeks ago. It's longing to be with him. You know? Your heart, your soul, that he has changed and, and is in your life now, uh, it, that your heart and your soul is longing to be with him. And that's why it says the ones that thirst after him. And that's us. We're thirsty. And we never get full because we long to be with Christ. And he supplied that need for us and given that to us. So God's going to give life to the person who thirsts after him. And he's going uh, to give the fountain of life. So to thirst after life means to know the life God wants for us to know the life that God's going to give us or gives us now, to know the fullness of life and just God himself being part of your life and answering your prayers as we pray to him. And, and he, he knows our needs and, and our hurts, and he's part of that. So to know that fullness, to know the hope of life that God has planned for us. And remember Sunday, that's one thing I brought out, was looking for the future, you know, on communion, looking behind us, but also looking for the future, is because the future, we have hope. Yeah. You know, and we have hope in Christ, and we have hope knowing that He has gone and already prepared for a place for us, and He's just waiting for us. And we're longing for that. To know the perfection of life that God longs for us to have. Not only do we <coughs> ourselves thirst for that, long to be with Him, but you know what? He's sitting there longing for us to be with Him. You know, it's kind of it's almost like He's lonely. He's created us, and He's sitting there looking at us, and He wants us to be with Him. You know, so he longs for that. That's that's part of what that means. And um, to thirst after his life, um, or to thirst after God's life, or God himself, it means to know God. To thirst after him means to fellowship with him, uh, to share with God. Everything that we have or we do in life, we share with him, don't we? I mean, we're kind of we're kind of taking our time, Tina and I, and each week we're just kind of going, finding out where people live, and we're going house to house, and we're visiting, you know, and and we're having some great porch time, sitting time, whatever that's called, you know, and uh, and that's kind of us fellowshipping and. Sharing God with each other. If we haven't been there yet, we'll be there. We're on our way. Amen. But but we will share that time together. That is so precious to do that. Um, also, the first step here was to know salvation, know forgiveness, know uh, uh, the cleansing of God upon our life, that everything's been taken away. You know, that's part of it. Uh, to know the hope, assurance, and security of God. Now, if you think of that, there's a lot of things in this world, and most things in this world, are you really, do you have that assurance of it? Of the, or, that, or that security of it? That you know it's going to last? Or it's going to be there for you? 
I mean, if you, you start, do we have anything like that in life that we know is is is, is a it's a security for us? We, we we're sealed. We feel secure. It's always going to be there for us. Is there anything in life that, that has that for us? I don't know of anything. Everything can be gone and done away with, except Christ. And Christ gives us that hope and that assurance and that security in our life that no matter what we go through or what we lose uh, here on earth, he's still there for us. And he gives us that. Uh, to have that living waters, to, to live for God, to obey, and to follow God. We do that because we long for him and we thirst for him. That's the reason we, we still obey him. That's the reason we still follow him every day. That's the reason we still want him in our life and part of our life. We can get up, if you think about it, we can get out of bed in the morning and just go out in this world and really do whatever we want to do, right? I mean, we can. But because of Christ living within you, and because his spirit lives within you, and it longs to put the two of us back together, we don't do that. You know, we we live for God, and, and we obey God, and we follow God. And that's the reason why, because part of it is living within us. And it's kind of like a puzzle, and he's waiting to meet us just to put that puzzle back together. That's why it amazes me sometimes when, and I'm not going to get off on this, but when I hear of the abortion stuff and they say it's not a human, you know, well, if you think about it, that little, that little infant there still hadn't come into this world into sin. It's nothing but God. It's never been entered into sin. It knows no sin. So is and, and God's creating it. So is it not just Him? I mean, that's the way I look at it. Um, the person who thirsts after God will be a citizen of the new heaven and the new earth. That's all of us who has accepted Him. The citizens of the new heaven and earth will be the overcomer. And the overcomer is the person who overcomes this world. The overcomer is you and I, the ones that are going to overcome this world and remain faithful and remain loyal to Christ and keep Him in our life. Um, it means the person who remains pure and follows the Lord Jesus. The overcomer is the person who conquers all the temptations and all the trials in life. And, and are we not tempted? I'm tempted. Um, I have trials in life, just like everybody else. We all do, don't we? I mean, we're all tempted. We were all tempted. Uh, and we all have trials in our life that sometimes just I don't know if y'all saw what I posted um, online if you looked at it. Actually, Jim gave it to me um, Sunday when we were up our visiting with the family with Roxanne and everybody. And it says, I wish that I forgot what I was going to say now. It says something about when you feel like you're drowning in life, don't forget that your lifeguard walks on water. You know, and we have that, don't we? We have days where we want to throw up that flag and we feel like, I've had all I understand today. I feel like I'm drowning, you know? But because of us not giving up, because of us conquering the temptations and the trials where this world tries to bring us down, we are the conquerors. We will overcome because of that. And, and there's two great promises that are made for us. One is we will inherit all things. All 
what the new heavens and the earth has to offer. We will inherit that. Um, and, and we will be the son of God. Now think about that. So there's a new heaven and a new earth. But right now, are we not, because of different situations in our life, limited to what we can have? And I am. I'm limited what I can live in or own or drive. Because I know how much money I'm spending. I don't have enough money to go out and buy everything I want. Thank the Lord. <laughs> you know, but we're limited right now in this world of what we can have. But he tells us, because of us being true and faithful, that we will inherit all things. Amen. Everything. Everything that's a part of heaven and everything that's a part of earth, we will inherit that. It will be ours. John 1, 12 said, but as, but as many as received him to, to gave him to gave he power to become the sons of God even to them that believe on his name. Galatians said, Wherefore thou art no more a servant, but a son. And if a man, then an heir of God through Christ. He said we're actually like kings, like heirs of God through Jesus. We will inherit that. 1 John 1, 3 said, That which we have seen and heard declare we unto you, that ye also may have fellowship with us. And truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. That we will inherit that fellowship with God and with Jesus. Now, he also starts talking about the faith of people. Who will be rejected is clearly spelled out at this point. And it's a tragic list. If you start reading that and studying just that one part in Revelation uh, uh, 21 8, it said, But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters, all liars, shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. So he starts calling it out. These are folks that will be rejected. Now, to me, and I've heard this said, and I agree with it, the worst part about hell will be separated from Christ forever. I can't imagine what it would be like to stand before him and him look at me and say, you're a good. And, and, and sometimes, you know, I pray daily for people to be saved in this church. If anyone's lost, there's anything we can say, sing, teach, preach, whatever, if there's one loss for them to accept Christ, I couldn't imagine sitting here and thinking to myself, well, if I'm not promised tomorrow when something happens, then what's it going to be like when I stand before Christ and you don't even know me? Because I wouldn't say the simple words, I'm a sinner for you of my sin. And he puts a list out here. And the first one was the fearful or the cowardly. And those, that's those who do not confess Christ because they fear what others might say. Those who are afraid to give up the world and deny self. Those who fear taking a stand for Christ. That's the fearful, right? Those who fear to fellowship or become identified with Christian people. All of that's fearful situations. 
And it all leads back to one thing. Is they don't want to confess Christ as their Savior. And they're fearful to do that. And to call upon his name. Matthew 10, 32 and 33 said, Whosoever therefore shall confess me before men, him I will confess also before my Father, which is in heaven. But whosoever shall deny me before men, him will I also deny before my Father, which is in heaven. When you think of that, what's the first thing you think of? I think of Peter denying him. You know? But I also think after Peter denied him, what did God do? He forgave him. And then what did he do? I mean, you, you remember on the day of Pentecost when they came out and he called Peter to preach that sermon on the mount, over 3,000 were saved. I think God done that for a reason. He said, yeah, I realized that, that he denied me. But he came back and asked me to forgive him, and I did. So now look what I've done for him to prove that I will forgive you. And he done Peter that way. But here's a man that stood before all of his friends and his disciples and everybody and denied the one God they had. And then God said, but I still love you. You know, and I'm going to forgive you. And he does us the same way, does he not? When we deny him, we, we fail him in life. But then we ask for forgiveness. And he hugs us and loves us and forgives us. And he says, here, look what I'm going to do for you. And he just blesses us again, does he not? And he just continues to love us and bless us. Even day after day, when there's days when we fail him. When we ask for forgiveness, he says, I'm, I'm going to show you how much I love you. I realized you failed and he does that. Romans 10 and 9 said that if thou, can, if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. And we know that. It's just that confession to God. And he will forgive us. The next thing he talked about was the unbelieving. Those who do not believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Um, the Savior of the world. Those who reject Jesus and his death upon the cross for their sins. He calls that out. The unbelieving will be rejected and not enter into the kingdom. Those who profess Christ but live hypocritical lives, who show by their sinful behavior that they don't really believe any. And I think we see that a lot. Um, and I know some, I'll just say, I know some, I've got some friends that that are in church every Sunday but also know the lifestyle they live Monday through Saturday and you know I've all, the one thing that's always terrified us and scared us and that's when we're out of here to do something that would mislead somebody cause you can build a lifetime of worshiping and praising God and serving God and lose your testimony in five minutes just that quick just in front of somebody. And I'm going to tell them myself because I used to be the worst sport in the world and I don't like to lose. And I've had to pray that that be taken away from me. Especially on the golf course. <laughs> and I, this was years ago. And I was at Mount Mary, actually up here playing. And I hit a tee shot off. And it took off and it just, I don't know where it ended up. I don't know where I found it. But anyways, I turned around and I was like, 
said, beat, beat my driver over the ground, wanted to break over, you know. So anyways, I didn't realize this, but there were some men playing like two holes over that knew me, right? So I sat down in the golf cart, next thing I know, I hear somebody just echo up through that holler, way to go, preacher! <laughs> <laughs> so, and the guy that was with me in the golf cart, I, I looked over at him and I said, will you do me a favor? And he said, yeah. I said, I'm going to lay down on the ground. Run over me. <laughs> 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 I got to find some kind of excuse. <laughs> you know? but, but last week, I was back out there with a couple of my buddies and I got to that hole and I said, I don't care what happens here. You won't see me get back. <laughs> I don't care if it takes me 25 strokes to get there. And they said, why? And I told them that story. I said, I'll never forget it. But it proved a point to me of how easily we can do that. How easily we can lose it that quick. And that to show our sinful behavior in front of people. You know, um, John 12, 48 said, He that rejecteth me and receiveth not my words hath one that judgeth him. The word that I have spoken, the same shall judge him in the last day. 1 John 2, 22 and 23 said, Who is a liar but he that denieth that Jesus is Christ? He's the Antichrist that denieth the Father and the Son. Whosoever denieth the Son, the same, the same hath not the Father, but he that acknowledgeth the Son hath the Father also. The next thing he talked about here was the abominable or the polluted. You say the polluted. Those who are worldly and who live worldly lives. Um, those who reach out to touch and taste the impurities and lust of the world. That they're living for the world and they just can't get away from it. Um, those who are stained and contaminated and polluted with the world, the sin of the world, and they cannot get away from it. Those who refuse to separate from the pleasures and possessions of this world and refuse to turn to God. And I'll tell you something, there is some good folks out there that the world has just got a hold of. And you can talk to them and talk to them, but until they realize it themselves, there won't be a change. And they're great people, but the sin of the world sometimes just gets wrapped around them, you know? And the only thing we can do is pray for them and love them and li keep lifting them up. There's never, there never can be a time. Um, you care if I use him? And I'm going to tell you something. I was at the jail and they talked to me about what a great young man he was. And that's what they told me. They said, but the world, and the lady said, Jackie, she said, but the world got a hold of you. And he can't get away from you. But you still love him. You're still praying for him, and I'm praying for him, and that's what we have to keep continue to do. We can never say, oh, the world's got you, and, and you keep sinning, and you keep doing bad things in your life. I'm done with you. That's the last thing we can do. You have to continue to pray for them. You have to lift them up. Because sometimes they don't even realize it. You know, they don't even realize that the sin of the world has got them and got a hold on them. It doesn't us. So, really, in our minds, we're like, why does this keep happening? 
Because we're not in their situation. You know, and it's godly. But we as Christians have to keep praying for those folks that somehow, someday, they'll break from that. And everything's possible, right? Everything. God can, can, can forgive everyone, no matter what they're going through or how many times they've been through it. He can forgive them. Romans 12, 2 said, And be not con conformed to this world, but be you transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God in our life. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and lust of the eyes and, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but of this world. That's 1 John 2, 15 and 16. The love of the world. That's probably the hardest. Out of all of these he lists, and there's a lot, that's probably the hardest part to overcome is when you get called up out of this world because it has so much to offer. And then we'll, we won't make it through all. The next one we'll go to it, and that's the murderers. Those who, who kill and take away the lives of others. Exodus 20, 13 is what? Thou shalt not kill. Jesus said, Thou shalt do no murder in Matthew 19, 18. But let none of you suffer as a murderer, or as a thief, or as a busybody in other men's matters. 1 Peter 4, 15. Whosoever hateth his brother is a murderer, and ye know that no murderer hath eternal life abiding in him. 1 John 3, 15. I mean, that's pretty cut and dried, isn't it? We're not to murder. We're... So let me ask you a question. And you may not want to answer it, so if you don't, that's fine. I wish I knew stats right now how many kids are being killed every day. So what is that called? It's murder. And it said not to take the lives, didn't it? We didn't say that, did we? That's what God said. And that's what they're forgetting. They don't have in their life that leadership of God in their life. If they did, it wouldn't be happening, would it? Anybody have anything you'd like to add? I know we have praise report with Donnie. Patsy, that goes she's healing up, doing better. And Donnie went to Winston uh, Monday and they got to do the procedure and you go back, what, two weeks to do the other side? Yeah. That's, that's huge, that's big. Let's just pray when that happens, it just takes over and you never can go back. Amen. 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 And it can happen. Just let it take over. He never has to go through it. Um, Dexter, I've talked with Lois a couple of times today. Of course, as Miss Linda sent that out, you know that he went to the uh, VA today and with breathing problems and heart issues, they've done all they could do there for him. Ambulance transferred him to the Baptist Hospital. She's supposed to call me tonight, let me know 
how he's doing. If it's later on, then we'll send the message out first thing in the morning. Okay, so just continue to pray for him. Uh, Pete sent me this text last week. Don Goss lives way Bay Road, 90 years old, fell, broke his pelvis. Remember him and his wife, Linda. Let's continue to remember Roxanne and the loss of her brother. She's part of Wendy's family there. Bobby and Patsy, let's remember that family. Continue to, to pray for them, lift them up uh, through this time. for Edith's situation that's going to happen Friday that, that we can get some answers about these headaches. And that's in the moon, right? Yes, sir. Remember Jennifer, she's having kind of a rough time. She's stressed. Foster and Ginger. Remember both of them and Edith Friday and Boone were headache, still having the headache issues. Um, I don't know if this is 100%, but uh, when I was at work today, I work with Robert Nettley's brother, Jamie, and he was out today. And some of the guys said they thought that her sister passed away. Robin Nettley's yeah. sister? So I'm not totally 100%, but that's what the guys was telling me that he went to work today, that pretty sure that his sister, which was Robin's, had passed away. So I'm not totally 100%. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. like to thank the whole church for all of their prayers and the concern for me. But most of all, I'd like to thank God yes. for being with me and with the, the doctor that done the procedure on me. But I'm so grateful and so thankful to be a member of this church. Amen. I love each and every one of you, and God bless you. Just can't put it in words. It's in my heart, but I can't get it to come out the way I want it to. But I thank each one of you, and I love each one of you, and may God bless you. That's all I can come out with words right now. But God be with you. Thank you. We miss you when you're not here. Thank you so much. God good. God is great. Amen. He's so great. Let's pray that God will be a man. Amen. And there's, there's, there's a possibility he may be gone for nine years. That's a Sunday school lesson. Sunday. Now, all I can think about is we was talking about things that happen and we wonder why. Now, this, this may be the answer may take that long to get him away from you know, what he's been going through for the last 15 years. I know you don't want him to be gone for that long. Right. But if it changes his life when he gets out. Tina and I had a friend that was sent off for 14 and a half years. And when he, he got an appeal, went back to trial, 
and uh, he was over drugs. And he changed so much that the warden and the guards in the prison he was in went to court with him and testified on his behalf of how he was leading people to Christ in prison mm -hmm. and got out. And he's still doing it today. Yeah. So, yeah, when he's out, we're, we're afraid to answer the phone. That's the only thing we can trust in. That's right. I'm the same way with my son. I don't know how long he'll be going to play yet, but uh, they're friends, and I know what they're going through. And it's very hard. I hope that you all will remember both of us, all of them in prayer. Yeah, we will continue to pray for them and pray for y'all. <laughs> so, good thing you get a little break from me. The, hey. bad, thing, the bad thing is, is you'll have to hear me preach the whole time. <laughs> I have talked to Janet Johnson, and she was in Fairbanks, and she said that had a very good time up there. And uh, she flew over the North Pole. This Sunday, Pete's will be preaching for you.
Thank you. 